Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to just do some simple stitching on my nativity scene. Um, and I've sort of got a bit of an idea about the sheep. So I'll just do a little bit more of this red work. I'm using cotton number 498 DMC. I did consider using the embroidery cotton, uh, the crochet cotton, but it's a real bright raspberry where this one's a darker raspberry. And I don't know, it's probably not much difference, but just seemed to look nicer with this one. So plus this one, I can control the thread because there's six strands in there that can be split down to any combination of strands where this I can't. So the work potentially could look just too similar for me. Like the letters in the saying, I'm thinking I'll use quite a thick thread or yeah, I, I'm just not sure. I just actually glanced then across to my beads and I thought, oh, I wonder if I could bead it just for something different. But anyway, I'll get there when I get there. The joy to the world did get hidden, but um, a couple of you suggested actually tracing it out and putting it somewhere else. And I love that idea. So I do want to do that as well. Actually, I'll do that now. That way I know it's done. So I thought that was brilliant because I did like that reference to the song, Joy to the World. So I'm just going to do that before I get too sidetracked. So yeah, as you know, if you're following along, my husband and some friends of ours are all in at the Pinball Masters competition. So it's been a real hoot seeing your comments. Um, well, I think one of, the, one of you girls said, what the hang is pinball? So that was pretty cute. So yeah, no, they're having a great time. I think my last video, um, I was preparing the um, bird wreath and um, we were waiting for them to arrive at the airport to collect them, but all the texts were coming through to say it was delayed. Well, it turned out their 6.30 flight, I think it was 6.30, um, turned into a half past nine flight. So by the time they got into Brisbane from Melbourne, it was well and truly midday. So their plans to go to the pinball festival or masters comp and just watch until you know, today they're actually participating. Uh, sort of were kibosh because they'd been up so early in the morning to get to the airport and then only to sit for many hours. So in the end, we took them to a local tavern. We had a late breakfast because they hadn't even had breakfast. Breakfast, early lunch. Just sat around and chatted and it was just lovely. And then um, by the time we sort of headed back home, I had a few little chores. I'd run out of Pussy cat food, so there was a couple pit stops on the way to pick up cat food, and we took them to our one of our Christmas shops that was on the way and showed them that. We sort of got back to the house about three o'clock, and they're all talk, you know, we'll go to the event and just spend the afternoon there watching. But I could see they were starting to fade, especially the lads. They were like, you know, really starting to get quiet. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <clears throat> so they sort of sat around on our patio and my husband has a couple machines. So they started playing our pinballs and and I'd um, decided I'd start a fire like the, I couldn't do the big bonfire because it was raining, which was unfortunate. That's just out in the garden. Um, but we've got what they call an Oz pig and it's like, um, you know, a couple gas bottles in shape welded together so you can sort of imagine that round oblongy shape but then it's got a grate and you can add logs in and stoke the fire so I started the fire and that sort of created that ambiance you know standing around a fire and it was raining and wet and cold and windy but we were sheltered so it was really creating a nice feeling <clears throat> and um, they sort of settled in so they ended up just not bothering to go which was good. So I've traced that and I think that will go there. Or will it go? Maybe it could go down the bottom here. I don't know. I might wait until it goes into my actual book and that'll tell me if I've got a bit of space or it goes up a side. 
I'm thinking it will be up the side. But um, I might just pin it there for now and see what comes of that. Yeah, so Friday night, we pretty much just hung around. No, this was Thursday night. We hung around and cooked dinner and made our jaffles on the jaffa line, all the jaffa lines. Um, I was actually going to grab the little brochure that came with them. Um, what did I do with that? Hang on one second, because a few people asked me about this. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're thinking it's back in the 70s, maybe 60s. The Jaffa Lion hit the market. So, that's what they look like. Now, you can buy them now in all of the camping stores, but they're usually square and there are two of them or one of them. And you open it up and pop in your bread and anything you want to heat up. Well, these were the original. They were made in Australia. And when I was up at my parents' place going through the cupboards, um, this fell out of one of my grandmother's cookbooks. So that sort of made us think that it was um, the early 70s, maybe even earlier. And um, they were designed to load it up with all your goodies and then those little ceramic squares would place it in your oven and then you open it up and a hot toasted jaffle comes out. And there's a series of little recipes. We're all laughing our heads off here. Like, look at this one, fish and celery. Ugh, couldn't think of anything worse. What was the other one that someone spotted? Egg and parsley pie, mushroom delight. There, cheese rabbit. Mmm. Don't think so. And there's not even rabbit in it. It's cheese, pepper, salt, mustard, and some white sauce. So there's not even a bunny in that one, which is good. There's sardine, savory, prawn, savory. Then they had some sweet ones. So yeah, this, this was all the craze. And we just love this advertising. What will I give the children tonight? There's something say, what's something savory for supper? Unexpected gifts, uh, gifts, guests, what can I serve? Why toasties, of course, cooked in the toasty toaster. Isn't that just gorgeous? That advertising slogan, that's just, yeah, corny but cute. So I've got uh, three of these. Uh, one was my grandfather's and the other two were my parents. So I gathered them up, brought them back to Brisbane and as I put them in the car, I can just hear my father, he said, now don't you ruin those things which I haven't, so it was all good. And our guests were like, wow, what are these? So it was a bit of fun. We toasted them up and um, had our toasties. So that was really good, quick little dinner. And then they played pinball and we just sat around and chatted all night. So it was a lovely evening. And then Friday, um, so I'm feeling, filming this Saturday morning. Friday, they decided after breakfast that they would go in and check it out. And they just watched, I think it was the ladies competition was on for the day. So they went in, caught up with um, a heap of hubbies who had their wives playing in the ladies masters. <clears throat> so they had a lovely day and I think they were home about four, five o'clock, hungry. So fired up the little Oz pig barbecue again. And um, we cooked some steak and made a steak sandwich. So that was really good. They were hungry too. Though. I think the, the brewery that they were at that was sort of hosting the event was pretty busy and the meals were quite simple sort of meals. So I think they probably didn't have a real good lunch. And then by the time they got back to me, they were famished. So steak burgers all around. They polished them up. And then uh, decided as part of the weekend's menu that I wouldn't bother with desserts because often when, especially the boys, when boys will have a few beers, they never seem to want to eat sweets. So if I was to go and bake a chocolate cake or, you know, do a nice dessert, often they just don't really go for it, especially if they're having a few drinks after dinner. So I decided this time I would just do um, a box of Maltesers one night. The next night I've got... Ferrero Rocheurs, uh, I picked up some boiled peanuts, just just easy stuff so I can sort of do the main meal and then wash up the kitchen and I'm done. So then I can sit around and enjoy too and I just bring out something to nibble and it works really well. 
And if they don't eat it, doesn't matter. I'm not throwing away a, a bread and butter pudding that I've slaved over for the day. So I've sort of changed my dessert menu a little bit over the years instead of putting pressure on myself to cook a heap of things. So that went really well. And I think they played pinball and sat around and chatted at the fire for, I don't know, I think it was one in the morning. I'd already gone to bed. I was like, I've got to be up to cook his breakfast. So I took off to bed about 10. <clears throat> they, um, they played and chatted till one and then they all went to bed. So yeah, it was a, a great day. They were all talking and laughing and they'd met up with a heap of friends from all over Australia that are within the pinball industry and often chat on Facebook groups and, you know, and only really see each other at competitions that may be held. And due to COVID, a lot of that had slowed right down. So I think they had a good reunion day while all the ladies were in competition. And then this morning, which is Saturday morning, they have had their breakfast and they had to be at the venue by nine o'clock. So I think it's about half past eight now that I'm filming this. So I've just popped them in all, they've all gone in the car. They've had their bacon and eggs and their cappuccinos and um, they've all headed off. They're gonna pick up Mary Ann's husband on the way and they're off to the comp. They've gotta be in the venue registered by 10 and then they work through the day playing their different competitions, gathering points. And if they're in the top 100, I think, they will be then playing again tomorrow. And that's like the finals. So it'll be exciting to see how they go. And um, Mary Ann, the, the wife like myself, that's not really into pinball, we are crafters. She is on her way over to my place and we are gonna spend the whole day together in my craft room crafting. So I can't wait. So I thought I'll just turn on the camera. I will film a bit of an update for you girls as you're sort of coming along for the weekend of pinball <laughs> adventures. So yeah, I'm like the pit crew for the, the uh, competitors. I've got to keep them fed and watered and ready to play. I said to them this morning, are you psyched? Are you ready? And they're all sitting there going, oh, we're so tired. I'm like, no, come on, come on. I'm not doing all this background work and keeping you moving forward. And if you're going to not come home with a trophy, they don't have a chance, to be honest. Like, they're not going to get a trophy. There's some players that have flown in from America uh, there's a man from the UK that's flown in and he's like world number two. Like they're all here. They sort of get on the circuit. It's it's incredible. So there's probably 50 players that will come from all over Australia and the world to compete in these tournaments. And I think the tournament sort of goes all around the place. So it might be in America or, you know, um, it's like a federation thing. Uh, I'm not, I'm probably talking out of school here and I don't know my facts, but anyway, they, they fly in and they're on the circuit, so to speak. So to beat those guys, they know how each game operates within the machine, where our lot sort of know the basics and um, Mary Ann's husband, Kev, he's, he's sort of even less skilled. He's better than me, but um, Kev, he's like, I don't know why he's wasted a ticket on me. But it's all good. He'll have a great day. So, um, yeah, there's some take it pretty serious. So when it's in Australia, all of the Australian people sort of tend to go to it because it's, you know, a catch up and social event. Plus they get to, they'll get a ranking. And I think from memory, they were saying there's like 8,000 people registered in the Federation. So they've all played some form of comp and they'll get a ranking overall. And I think my husband's 7,028. The gang from Melbourne are in the 5,000s. So, um, yeah, we're not going to win a trophy. There's, um, you know, when num world number one, two and three are in the building from the UK and America, our boys aren't, you know, our boys aren't going to make anything. So it's pretty funny. But they're having a great time. It's just a great social event. And being COVID has 
you know, slowed so many of these types of activities, even our world, you know, retreats and craft days and you go and do a lesson about something that's just all came to a halt and it was just so disappointing but it's all starting to come back now different retreats are popping up so um bring it back i say so how many threads did i use two this is good because i can fill you in on the weekend's adventures and not have to think too hard about my design so I thought I'll just turn on the camera and tell you all about it. And for those of you who don't know what pinball is, um, it is basically a machine that plays obnoxiously loud music, has obnoxiously loud flashing um, lights. A uh, little silver ball comes flying out of nowhere. Once you pull this, this lever, so it goes clang and this ball comes shooting through. Then you have two buttons on the side of the big timber box that you press that flips the flippers. And this little ball will come flying down and you've got to try and clip that ball and flick it back up into the game. And if you know what you're doing, the lights flashing may be in a certain area on the play field that tell you to aim for them. And if you collect those certain areas by hitting them with this little silver ball, you'll get points. And then those points will open up areas within the game and etc, etc, etc. That's the extent of it. So when I play, which is not very often, my whole aim is just to connect silver ball with flipper. Where it goes after that doesn't matter. That's how much it uh, does for me. And I think I said in a previous video, the music and the, the lights and all of that, it just makes me really hyper. Like I get quite, you know, worked up and excitable and silly and yeah. So when I've had a, a session on the machines, I sort of come back into the house and I feel like getting the vacuum cleaner and dusting and really gets me going. So I need karma activities in my life. The last thing I need is a silver ball rattling around in my head. So it's not my thing. It's best I find quiet activities. And that's where my needlework and craft comes in. It's sort of good for me without all that silliness. But it's a great social activity, so I don't mind. I like cooking, so I sort of like doing that side of the catering and planning the weekend's food and making sure everyone's happy and full. So that's sort of my position in all of this chief washer bottle washer and cook or whatever the saying is so yeah they're all having a great weekend they were very flat last night i must say after standing at the the brewery all day watching and chatting and socializing when they got home they were pretty pretty buggered and once i gave them this big steak burger and that sat in their tummies. You imagine what happened. They started to get really sleepy as their body started to digest that big lump of steak. So it was good because they really needed a, an earlier night because if they're going to play all day today, and I'm really not sure what time they'll be back. They could be back at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, but they might be back at 9 o'clock. So they really needed their rest. So I figured if I put a big piece of steak in their, their tummy... They then go into digestion mode, which they did. You could see their eyes were drooping and the conversation was just more gentle. They weren't as hyper as the first night when they got here off the plane and they're all excited. And so, yeah, the the one gentleman and his wife, Raylene, she, she was giggling as we were watching them because Raylene didn't go into the comp on Friday just to watch. She stayed with me because her family are Toowoomba people. So her mum, her aunt and her sister drove across to um, Brisbane to see Raylene and they were going to spend the day together, have lunch and they'd chosen Garden City Shopping Centre because it's got a great restaurant area. So they were just going to have a cup of tea and a piece of cake somewhere and then mosey on into a, a restaurant and have some lunch. And and I was just going to go and drop her off and do a bit of shopping and then pick her back up. So that was our day while the boys were in socialising. 
Anyway, um, with the rain and the weather and the cold and the wind, at the last moment, we sort of said, look, come to our place. And you can just sit on our couch and the kitchen's full of food. We'll just hang out here. So they ended up doing that and it, it was really nice. They, um, they had a lovely day and the girls just sat around and had a cup of tea and they bought a nice bun you know, with the icing on top and a banana, uh, no, what was it? A date loaf. So they ate that and then they bought a hot chook, chicken. So they had a, a chicken roll and then I had some pumpkin scones in the freezer. So I pulled them out and said, do you want some scones? Oh, yes. So they ate the scones. Like We ate so much and they just chatted and laughed and meandered around to the lounge room or off the kitchen bench. It was a lovely day. And then they headed off about two o'clock and drove back to um, Toowoomba. So it was great. Ray got to catch up with her mum, her sister and her auntie. And um, while the boys were in at the pinball, checking it out, making sure it was all to order. <laughs> So when they got back, we sort of then started cooking them their dinner. But Ray's with them today. She's in the competition. She's going to have a go. So we won't see Raylene for the day. So later on, we'll catch up with everyone. And in the meantime, Marianne and I, the widows to pinball, are going to craft. And um, if you've been watching the... Um, charity journal video series that I'm doing as well. That is 20 journals we're making to be gifted to Mary Ann's work. And Mary Ann's work is a heap of teachers. So they've selected families that are in need. And every year they, um, I'm just grabbing the pattern here. I'm a bit lost on what these lines are down here. So every year they pick, um, some families within this list to gift things to. So it could be clothing, it could be oh, anything. So Mary and I make these journals and the quantity of journals last year jumped up to about oh, somewhere between 13 and 15. And that was a lot of work, as you know, it's a lot of work. So we vow and declared, because I think we did two big weekends with about four women. And it was great fun. We had a ball, food and journal making for three days. And I had prepped a lot prior. So all they had to do really is the construction or sewing around pages and just basic sort of things. I'd already nutted it out. So I said to the girls, next year we're going to start early and every so often we'll get together and just for an evening, just do something. So we're sort of at the stage now of pulling them together putting tassels on the spine, you know, um, stitching maybe at pockets, gluing the pockets down, but the pockets are cut sitting on the page where they're going to go. So I've sort of gone ahead and done that. So it's just a bit of sewing machine work, a bit of glue work, put some tassels, like I said, on the spine just to pretty them up. And then it'll be pop some printed ephemera into all the pockets that the person who gets the journal can play with. So some pretty pictures and postcards and just some random things. So we're nearly there. And even if Marianne and I got 10 of them done today, that, that'd be a good help. That will, um, you know, take the pressure off at the end of the year. So I've got two videos already filmed for that series and they'll come out later in the year for you. There's just so many videos at the moment coming out. So I've pushed those two updates to um, uh, August and October. So you'll have to wait for those. And I'll probably film something a little bit this afternoon just to let you know what we sort of did today. But you won't see it till end of the year. So it doesn't really matter. It's You'll get an update when you get an update. You're getting really spoilt at the moment. I've got Junk Journal July videos coming out daily. And then we've got our Roxy Journal of Stitchery. And um, because I'm sort of doing a few colour schemes here and a few different types of projects, they're nearly daily. And then in amongst that, I've been doing extra pages to fill up my 
journals that I made in the first half of the year because I had spare pages. I deliberately added a few. So if I felt like doing a little bit of needlework, my journal of stitchery is just somewhere where it can be placed. So I think you've just watched today um, the mushroom page, an update on um, that piece finished. Where is that page? I'll just grab it and show you in case you haven't seen it. This is the journal of stitchery number two I did from the beginning of the year and I decided to do a flip out of um, on the inside cover. I might just come up a bit so you can see. So the inside cover I would normally just do one picture but I decided because we do flip outs in our journal making in paper we could do that in fabric. So that's a panel ready to stitch, yet to be created. And that's something that sort of was rolling around my desk. So I've just pinned it there if one day I might create something. So when you flip this page out, I've done a spread of the mushrooms long ways. Now this video you would have seen Saturday morning. So I'm watching comments roll through now from that video. So this has popped up with the Junk Journal July, plus me talking about nativity and um, the little bird wreath. So if you did want to see the making of this, it's a three-part series over about a month and a half where I just slowly picked it up and worked on it. So there, that's in amongst uh, my playlists. So you can see the mushrooms and how I did different types of mushrooms. So, and there's still room in that, so I can do one there. I've got the back cover here. I've got another flip out in there. And I've got another one there. And I've got room here. There's a space there. So don't be afraid that if your journal, your even your Christmas journal, you think that you can squeeze in another signature, do it because next year you might decide to do some more stitching and you'll have somewhere to put your pieces. So I think it's um, a lovely idea to do that. Now I'm just looking at my piece here. I'm at the point where I need to make some decisions. Do I continue with the red and just do a wash of red? But I do know the sheep. I want to see these little curls. I'm thinking I'm going to bead them. So option one, all red and the bearded sheep happens. Option two, all red for Mary and Joseph. Then I bring some colour in for baby. Then a brown for the cow. And then, of course, my bearded sheep. So I don't know. I think I'm going to bead the sheep at this stage, which will probably bring me up to the end of this video. Then just have a think about it. And maybe, maybe then I'll know what I'm going to do with the rest of the pieces. And maybe the beading will sort of, you know, give me a bit of an idea. I hope this needle is the right size to go through those tiny seed beads. I don't think it is. I might just change that to this guy. So yeah, I'm now just filming this, waiting for Marianne to come. And I'll have to pack away this and we'll go into journal production mode. <laughs> All right, let's see. We're going to do some little curls. So I'll get that needle through with a couple stitches sort of secure myself so that it doesn't pull through. This will take a little while. But I think it'll be worth it. The 3D little sheep would be pretty cute. As for my bird panel, the only thing I have done that you guys haven't seen me do is I have 
use some art glitter glue around the edge of all of my holly leaves so I've turned them over and just put a tiny little drizzle around the edge of them all so that that dries and they don't fray and as it's drying and it's tacky I've just popped them into position so they're now sort of sitting there like if I mucked around with it too much they probably would come off but they're sitting there enough for me now to stitch same with the little bird he is sort of sitting there um, glued down and I haven't stitched that down yet so that's all I've really done there I do want to couch in um, all of these twines for the wreath itself but that'll be another video I thought I've got so many stories to tell you that it's probably best I do some work that is just not mindless but I don't have to think too much because then that I'll end up stopping my story forgetting where I'm at and you'll be wondering what the hang because she hasn't finished her sentence because I've stopped to think about a bird wreath so I thought I'll work on the nativity today a bit of beading and um, that'll be enough to to concentrate on so I've just put three beads on my needle I knew stitching all that lace on would be annoying but I should have just carried on with my embroidery and the beading first and then did the embellishing which is technically probably the right way to do it because now my thread is going to get hooked on all that lace that's all right it's all right so I've gone through the three a second time with my thread and that just really secures down I might zoom in a bit it's still out I come right up my puppy dogs are playing chasing each other around I'll do it maybe only two this time because my curve is really starting to get a bit tight there so I'll just put two beads on so when it's a longer straighter line I would do three and then I'm going to come up behind the the third bead that I did just before and I'm going to go through him plus the two that I just did so see that I did three first twice now I'll put another two on but I've come back up through that third and what that will do because I'm wanting to do a curl it really helps everything to sit nicely just a little trick so go back to the one of the last beads that you put on and just bring your needle up through like you don't have to but if you were making jewelry and you needed the beads to sit exactly where you want them to sit that's what they do they'll go back one bead and grab it so I probably don't really need to do that with this type of work but it does sort of help you design see now I put four on there and it's it's not going to be any good it's going to be too straight I'm going to not have a curve so I'm going to remove one of them and then lie that down yep that's better probably even two would have been even better but you know we're not entering this in a a competition at the local show where it's judged so it's all all good okay so this will be really pretty this will make our little sheep look like he's like curly and three-dimensional Just trying to get that needle up okay so another couple beads 
So have you all worked out how you're going to do your prompt, your wreath? I'm not sure how I'm going to do my second one, my red one. I don't have a, a great idea yet. I sort of, the bird came, bluebird came together really easily for me. But the red one hasn't. <clears throat> I probably don't need to do a red one because I've got this little nativity one going on a spare page. So, you know, I could take the pressure off myself a little bit. But who knows, I might get to the end of next week having completed this one and Bluebird and get that little itch to do something. So I may come back with a red wreath. We'll see. Okay, so my little curl is nearly complete on my little lamb. My little, not, he's not a lamb, he's a sheep. It'll be tedious, it will take a while, but I think it'll be worth it. Something a bit different. Okay. Last couple beads. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do with the rest of the characters in the scene. Like red work is stunning when it's just red, but already I'm deviating from that. So maybe I just go for it and create random things, but based on that red. So maybe I find some lighter reds that match or some gray tones that sort of, you know, red and gray always looks great together. I don't have to do a brown, a brown cow. Maybe I do a gray one and those, those tones will sort of all work together don't know just going back through all of the beads to try and cinch them a little tighter so that I get that more rounded shape they're a little bit jagged looking for my liking but you know it doesn't matter but we'll give it a little be nice to have that rounded shape That's pretty good. I might just pop a couple more in the center to really get that curve. See how that's a bit straight there? I think it's hard to get that curve. But anyway, I think my beads maybe need to be a little bit smaller. But it doesn't matter. It's fun trying. Yeah, that's, that's good. So they should be at the comp by now. Settling in, getting their registration papers sorted, getting the instructions for the day. What other questions came amongst the comments when you watched all those videos with the pinball story coming out oh, I think I answered most of them I think a lot of his comments were gee I haven't played that or thought about pinball for many years it was pretty big in the day it's really had a resurgent I think um, some of the companies that make them uh, Stern would be the biggest one I'd say there's Belly, Williams and Stern. They're both in America. Um, Stern was massive in its day, huge. Those machines were popular. And then it sort of went a bit quiet. You know, the I guess the generations that were playing them then went out, got jobs, got married, had families and sort of weren't hanging around milk bars playing pinballs. And the new kids that come along, the children of the pinball kids sort of got into Nintendo and PlayStation and all of those games that were at home. So now the pinball kids are all in their 50s, 60s, 
and are now starting to think about those childhood memories and the games and they've started um, purchasing the old machines so that sort of has got a resurgence going of you know the old Adams family machine which came out I think late 70s it's so popular now and if you can find a good one they're they're really climbing in value so it's nearly become a bit of an investment for the 55s to 65s and then COVID hit so everyone's at home locked down so even more people started thinking about their childhood and buying up pinball machines something to play with a bit of entertainment because everyone was in lockdown so the prices started to increase so we saw a, a jump of probably 20 to 30 percent on the old machines now in a in amongst that Stern and um, Belly Williams, those manufacturers of the machines who have just been quietly ticking away, selling machines, brand new ones with current titles like Toy Story and um, a lot of the bands like Aerosmith and, you know, all the modern bands, Queen and all this sort of stuff. They've been ticking away, maybe making 100 machines for each title maybe sometimes 50 and the people that were buying them were businesses that um, would be like a time zone or something where it's an arcade of lots and lots of machines that kids could go in and play the children of the kids of pinball if that makes sense so then when COVID hit and all of these middle-aged lads reminiscing about their childhood while locked down buying second-hand machines of whatever was around suddenly stern was getting requests for even more machines so the 50 they would make sold out in 10 minutes so then they'd make 100 then make 150 and 200 so they were now shipping brand new pinball machines around the world so everyone was sort of would buy an old one and then maybe a new one so now collections are starting to happen and the new machines, because, you know, technology has advanced, these new machines have got computers inside them that are making gameplays that are just, you know, way more advanced. And they can go through modes and they can collect points and targets and you know like more like the playstation era all of that computer programming opened up all those sorts of games gameplay that they go on a journey within the game it's not just hitting the silver ball around and now these new machines that are out they can connect to the internet so now our guys here in australia can log on to the internet through the machine and play people around the world which is just amazing that simple old pinball machine has become quite high tech so now the manufacturers have had this resurgence and they are just pumping out so many machines and now bands like queen and movie houses like disney they're all happy to talk to them and say oh we'd love a toy story pinball or we'd love um well, there's rumours of a Back to the Future pinball to do with that movie from the 80s. So the pinball houses, the manufacturers are hiring and training and it's like this resurgence of what it used to be back in the day when pinball was first out there in the marketplace. So it's been quite interesting and of course prices have gone up because there's more people involved. I think too because people were not traveling um there was that excess money sitting around that may have been that holiday every year so they've been looking at activities that they can do at home so people have been gardening and buying pinball machines and you know just finding things to help keep your sanity while we were all you know dealing with this covid so it's been quite interesting how it's all played together and there's always been these competitions that have been around the whole time, but maybe only, you know, a couple thousand people involved. 
to have up to 8,000 people registered around the world in this comp wanting to sort of get together and compete to some level is um, pretty amazing too. So I think there's a lot of industries that may have faded a little bit over the years, have been reinvented because the way we interact and move and, you know, spend our leisure time due to COVID has sort of brought us all back to basics. Does that make sense? That's my theory on it. I don't know if I'm right, but it's like take away the aeroplane and everyone now has to do something in their backyard. And I know here in Australia, a lot of regional towns have really got a great boom out of it because the people in the cities aren't, you know, jumping a plane and going to Bali. They're now jumping in the car with the kids and driving, say, two and a half hours out of Brisbane and spending a few dollars in a cafe in a little country town or just buying a burger or... And it's been, it's been fantastic to see because they're finding that just outside Brisbane, for example, there's all these little boutique wineries and boutique um, jam making farms, you know, where they make Rosella jam or something like that. So it's just been lovely to see, I guess, the, the cars heading out into the bush and spending some coins because we tend to think more abroad, I guess, and go, oh, let's take the kids to Fiji or Vanuatu or, you know, when there's so many activities in our rural towns and there's families connected to them. Can't you tell I'm a country kid? I get quite passionate about dragging the city folk out to come and visit the country folk because, yeah, I think it's important, very important. And I think COVID may have clipped a few wings, as they say. So, yeah, that's my my theory on the, the social migration. <laughs> They'll write reports. They'll study this one day. What happened in 2020 when COVID hit? How did society change? Yeah, they'll, they'll study human behaviour. We'll all be long gone and they'll be like referring to our era as the, the year the pandemic hit, you know. <laughs> Some of them went to their craft rooms and didn't come out. Others bought pinball machines. So it's quite funny. So there's another little curly beady thing. So it's a bit tricky to get the shape of this little guy. So I suspect my beads are probably a little bit big. But I don't have any smaller ones in the colour I like. So I'm not going to go and buy beads for this little sheep. I'm going to use what I've got and be happy with it. Because it just has to stop, doesn't it? It's buying all these goodies. So I might leave that there and I might, we've got 10 minutes left and I might just pick up my little bird. So you can see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to curl heaps of little beads in there to make him quite 3D. So we'll leave him at that and I'll fiddle with that a little bit more maybe later on today. Now little bird, all I'm going to do with him is I'm going to get my cottons and have a look at how I can stitch, oops, how I can stitch um, on there some highlight threads. Like I could be safe and just go around with the cream, but I think I want to try before I just do the safe colour. I think it's already out. I want to have a look at this colour as my tacking down thread on those beige holly leaves. If it looks silly, I'll um, go to safe. But I'm sort of thinking that that might add a nice little detail. So here we go. Let's have a play. The next video I do, I'll focus just on the bird because I really want to couch down the 
wreath itself and I think I sort of do need that in place sooner rather than later so but while we've got you know 10 minutes or so before the hour I just want to do a couple little stitches and we'll see what it looks like I guess not all the leaves need to have this blue edging I just want to shorten up that stitch. I've run out of space to get around the corner of that little petal. So let's have another play at that. Okay. Yep, that's better. I know I wanted the wreath to be very neutral and disappear a little bit and let Bluebird do his thing. But I don't know, I sort of feel like a couple of these leaves, if not all of them, could be highlighted in this steely blue colour. The steely blue colour I was going to definitely do in these little sprigs. Let's see how this is looking. So it's just a running stitch right around the holly leaf. And like I said, my next video will couch down the outer edge of the wreath. Yeah, I'm liking that. I like it. I like it. That is going to stay. I can't wait to do the bird because we can do so many crazy stitches on him. He's going to be quite a embellished little bird, I think. He's got huge potential. From little lace snippets to just some bullion stitches and beads. Plenty of work to do. That's looking good. I like that. Yes. Yes, yes, that's going to stay. Oh, come on. Why can't I get that through there? Can you hear that beeping in the distance? That beep, 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 beep. That's my washing machine. The thing I just, I love washing. You're going to think I'm weird now. I love washing. I love the fact that I can have lots of piles and work through it and it sort of anchors my day. But that machine has that beeping sound. You know, I'll go to the machine when I'm ready. But when it's beeping at me, playing that cute little sound, oh boy, it gets under my nerves. I know I could probably find the program and turn it off, but, you know, I haven't. But when I'm busy and it's going beep, 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 it does annoy me. Now, what I might do is, what do we do up the centre? Do I do the running stitch or do I do a straight line stitch? I'm going to do a running first, see what it looks like. And I can always come back down and fill in the gaps with another stitch. I think the running stitch will suit. The straight stitch might be too strong. Yeah, the running stitch will be good. Okay, let's finish that off. Oh, that washing machine. It's like it's screaming at me in a nice, cute way. <laughs> okay, and there we go. Okay, everyone, that is it it for my little flower and my little leaf that's going to work beautifully so i will come back with the next video um, and we'll focus more on the little bird in the meantime i can easily pick this up over the next few days and carry on with my little sheep by then i may have a bit of a feeling for what i'm going to do for the cow and the nativity uh, baby jesus and his crib and of course the wording so that will just sort of roll along in the background. I'll keep you posted. Um, and yeah, like I said, little bird will be more of a focus on the next video. 
Okay, everyone, I will talk to you all soon. Look after yourselves and bye for now.